We are going more or less in time, I think. Last presentation is from uh, Kevin Kerrigan. Kevin has been working within the, the register, business register area since 10 years now, more or less. The first time I met him was for a Bright project 10 years ago. And now uh, Kevin is uh, EBR technical manager and is also coordinating from technical point of view this e-box project and which is part of the presentation of Kevin today. So, Kevin. Thank you, Vidya, for the, the warm um, introduction. I suppose uh, just a story that we shared before on the panel there. It was 10 years ago when, when I joined the forum and joined the, the colleagues around here. And with respect, I thought, you know, these wise people, these older people, some gray-haired, some, some not so gray-haired. I thought, they're very wise, and I'll, I'll listen to them. And then at the weekend, my little niece, she, she was about eight, nine years old, and she turned around to me and said, Kevin, what are those great things in your hair? You know? So I think over the years, you've, you've passed on your wisdom, but you've also passed on some, some of the gray hair. But anyway, about, about eBox. Um, first of all, thanks for the opportunity to be able to present eBox here today on behalf of the project consortium. I think um, there's a lot of touch points that we've talked on over the last two days and there's a lot of opportunities for us to leverage the work that we're doing within the project, within the working group that we're talking about and activities within ECRF, within the, the benchmark survey, and hopefully we'll find some ways to be able to collaborate and share that knowledge. Within the business registry domain, we seem to have a little bit of a love affair for acronyms. So we have ECRF, we have EBR, we have IACA, XBRL, yesterday we had the LEI, and in this project, we're no different. We have eBox. And eBox is the European Business Ownership and Control Structures. So today, I'm, not, I'm trying to not use any more acronyms, or at least not use them without explaining them. So what is eBox? Well, first of all, it's a European Commission-funded project under Director General Home Affairs in the prevention of and fight against crime. Really, the, the objective of the project is to provide prototype data services for the counter-crime agencies to support their investigations against money laundering activities. We're talking about IT data services for financial investigation units, counter-crime agencies, the um, asset recovery agencies, and the law enforcement agencies, that they can identify the links and relationships between legal entities in the, in the fight against crime, when they're building their cases. The eBox project is a follow-on from the Bonet project, which was a feasibility study to discover what services were required to identify the beneficial ownership of legal entities in money laundering um, networks. So really, in effect, Bonet did the research and made the recommendations that we're now building the prototype data services as a proof of concept. So if we look at eBox in terms of numbers, the project is running for a duration of 18 months. It started in January 2014 and now completes in uh, July of this year. It's received 650,000 euro in terms of funding from the European Commission across 14 project participants. Out of those 14 project participants, five of them are business registers that are providing data into the network. And through those five business um, registers, we have access to 22 million um, companies and just over 43 million officers and owners of those companies. On the slide there, we have some of the project partners who are participating within the, the eBox project. The project is coordinated by the European Business Register, and there's a plethora of, of partners who are providing expertise to make these services a reality. So we've got IT service providers, we've got <coughs> universities, financial investigation units, and most importantly, the, the business registers who are providing the data to facilitate the services. So what are these services that, that I keep referencing to? Well, we're talking about counter-crime agencies and officers who are, are trying to build a case and do research. Typically, they start off and they've got some partial information on a legal or a natural person, and they want to, to build up their case from that point. We've 
identified three core services that are required in that case development or in those investigation processes. The first one is the search registered entity. So you've got some partial information on a natural or legal person and you want to hone in and identify exactly and uniquely identify a natural or legal person to proceed with your investigation. Using the search registered entity service, you're provided with a list of natural or legal persons and then you hone in using auxiliary information that we provide. Nothing new there, just a search, but we, the, the point is that this service can't be too clever. We have to let the officers investigate and, and use their um, knowledge to decide what's useful and what's not useful information. The second service that we've provided is search officers and owners. So you've got a unique legal or natural person and now you want to find out where they are an officer or an owner and you're building out from the top up. The third service is get officers and owners. So you have a, a legal person and you want to find out the officers and owners of that legal entity. Straight away you can see how very quickly you can provide a 360 picture and recursively go out to get the map of, of a complex structure and, and an ownership structure. There's other um, auxiliary services that we've provided, so the ability to retrieve documents um, and to support the, the investigation in that way. Another one that we've looked at is bulk extract of data from different business registries. So <coughs> what we've done, and this is a, a bit of research that's been done recently within the project, we've looked at um, taking bulk extracts from Latvia and Romania in this case, and looked at the, the shareholder links that are available within other jurisdictions within Europe and beyond. So what we're looking at on the screen at the moment is the data from Latvia and Romania and um, the, the darker the lines, the more, the higher percentage of relationships between shareholder links to legal persons in the other jurisdictions. So we can see big links between Romania and Cyprus and Latvia and Cyprus in, in, in this instance and Latvia and Estonia. Similarly from a natural persons, you can see heavy links between Latvia and Russia and, and Italy and, and Romania. It's just a, a way to see, uh, look, when we have access to this information, we can make certain deductions on this, on this basis. Um, all of the information that's, that's provided here will be made available in the final report of eBox. And this is just one of the latest parts that's been investigated by one of our partners, Transcrime. So when we're talking about the access to, to, ne to the network, who's providing the data and who's providing the visualization tools? As I said, five business registries are currently participating. Estonia, Ireland, Italy, Latvia, and Romania. And they're the ones that are providing the data into the, into the network, into the eBox platform. On the data visualization side, we have Estonia and Italy. So they currently have visualization tools, and Ingmar showed a brief visualization map of, of, of some of the ways that they currently provide access pre eBox. What they're doing through the eBox project is using the information that we're providing as services and enhancing that so that they can do transnational and, and, and um, cross border extension, and, and we'll show some examples of that in a moment. Technically speaking, from an architecture, eBox platform is a service oriented architecture. Centrally, the platform sits. And on one side, we receive requests in from the data um, visualizations, the intermediaries, the financial investigation users. And on the other side, we have the business registries. So we receive into the platform requests for information. We then go off and act as a proxy and make the queries down to the business registers, collate the results, and wrap them up and do translations and return them back in a way that they can easily digest and represent within their visualization tools. In a nutshell, any of the business registers that want to provide data to the eBox platform provide an eBox gateway that can support the eBox services and provide a way, provide knowledge and the information in the way that we can translate and pass on. Very high level, but in a simplistic way, that's, that's the way that the, the eBox platform works. Just want to give you an insight into what the tools look like and how the countercrime agencies would interact with the eBox platform and how it would look like. So two of the partners, Estonia and Italy, provide the visualization tools. We're now looking at the Estonian tool. 
imagining from the situation that this is a, an officer doing an investigation and they've got some partial information. It could be an address, it could be a part of a name, part of an ID. At the moment, we're just using the search term international bank, so we guess that they're looking at a, at a corporate and look at a, le a legal person as a starting point. When they, they hit search or go, the tool goes off, contacts the eBox platform, waits for the results to come back, and we can see in this instance that 56 results came back from the eBox platform. When we look down at the terms, now it's the, the auxiliary information, and the officer has to drill down and say which exact and unique entity it wants to continue its search with. So if we assume the second from the bottom, Merchant International Bank, SPA, this is the result then that the, the Estonia tool visualizes from the data that it's received from the eBox platform. Entities that are marked in green are companies and, um, I'm sorry, legal persons, and in blue are natural persons. So in this instance, a very simple example, but it just shows that there's three officers or owners results coming back from the eBox platform, and they're all the same person in this instance, a sole, uh, a sole governing director, a chairman, and a managing director. If we take a, a different case, and first of all consider it pre-eBox, without any eBox integration, this is the results that the Estonian tool would provide. So for a case where you search on a company, Virgenta, an Estonian registered company, you would see that there's three officers and owners relationships found using their, their tool. Kavanaugh Overseas Ventures Limited, a good Irish company, and then two other positions, one of a company and one of a, a, a person. Kavanaugh Overseas is marked in red because the Estonian um, tool at this point in time does not have the ability to reach into the Irish business register. It's constrained within the information that it has there. It knows that 33.4% um, is owned as a shareholder by, by Kavanaugh um, Overseas Ventures Limited, but it knows nothing else of the structure or the, the, the information that's held within the Irish register. With eBox, Kavanaugh Overseas Ventures Limited turns green because we can now delve into the Irish register and and see what information is available in our hand. We we're able to see that there's two relationships, Andrew Kavanagh and Morgan Kavanagh, available. And if there was documents, etc., on that through the Irish Register, we'd be able to retrieve those through the eBox platform. So just a, a brief kind of overview of what's available and, and the power that it, that it can cross um, platforms. What we're looking at now is the Italian version of the visualization tool. So they're showing a, a, an extract of a search on Ryanair. So you can see the, the um, parent company within the Irish register, Ryanair in Ireland, and then the subsidiaries across the Italian Estonian register, and you can drill up and you can see the um, relationships back to the founding shareholder of the Estonian subsidiary. Um, another example just showed the complexities. There's, there's three or four um, legal entities involved in this one. And the idea is that very quickly, an officer investigating or doing a case could in a number of clicks, visually put up a complex, um, a complex structure within a number of clicks and can decide whether a branch of that investigation is within scope or without scope of their investigation. They can take extracts of this tool, they can return and do searches at, at a later date. So where are we on the project and where are we on the status? Well, the platform is built, the partners' business registry gateways have been implemented, the visualization tools have been changed to facilitate um, integration with the eBox services. And we're now in the process of doing testing and also looking at sustainability considerations. As I say, the project is scheduled to end in July, so we're now thinking about how can we leverage the investment by the European Commission and by the member states and to think beyond the, the, life scale, the lifetime of, the, of this project. Our considerations in terms of sustainability are under four main headings, legal and policy. At the moment, there's no legal base for the eBox project. There's no directive that uh, stipulates that this should be there and access should be there. We'll talk in a minute about the Fort Annie Money Laundering Directive and make some references there, but apart from, from, from some possibilities there, there's no le legislative base. Operationally, the counter-crime agencies are crying out for this service. Currently, their access to data is slow, cumbersome, expensive, and sometimes it comes down to very basic um, logistic issues, like they don't have a credit card, therefore they can't pay for access to it. A ludicrous situation, so this is what, what eBox is trying to, to overcome. 
Technically, this is a prototype service that we've built. If this was to be a production level service, we'd have to have resilience in place. We'd have to consider who's going to host this and house this, and what considerations and what technology stack need to be in place to support that. Likewise, if it was production level, you would have to have um, support in place to operate this on a day-to-day -day basis, and you'd have to have governance structure in place to support this. That's the main considerations that we're, we're considering at the, at the moment. So, I mentioned the um, fourth anti-money laundering directive. Article 29 states that members states shall ensure that the information on beneficial ownership is held in a central register and the data must be accessible to, com to competent authorities and financial investigation units, to obliged entities and to any persons that can demonstrate a legitimate uh, interest. This has been talked about in every form for the last year, two years, um, to be adopted and, and, and moved on in the next number of years. It's topical. We know that there's a role that eBox could play in there, and we want to make sure that we can leverage and provide whatever support to the member states and leverage the investment that's been made to date in this area. So I think very early, but opportunities to discuss what's possible there. Finally, just to, to close off, in the sustainability work that we've done, we've issued a survey out to the business registers to gauge some insight into what their thoughts are in the, the beneficial ownership space and, and how they see their role being played. Now, I know that this um, overlaps with some of the work in the, bench, um, in, in the benchmarking survey, but just to, to share our insights. So this has gone to the business registers within the European Business Register, and I think at the last count we had 15, 16 respondents on it. Okay? So 80% of the business registers are of the opinion that their business register will be utilized as the central register of information on the ultimate beneficial owners. Half of them think that it's at least likely that their business register will allow full public access to beneficial ownership information. We got to 90% without it stopping working. But nope. Most partners believe that it's likely that their business register would allow direct access by law enforcement agencies or financial investigation units. A significant majority of, of respondents think that no legislation or policies that require identification to individuals accessing the information exists at the moment, with the exception of, of Estonia. And the majority think that they would need to recover fees and charges for the provisions of office and owner information. Just some of the, the insights, so it's, it's, a, it's a scratch on the surface really, but it's, we just wanted to gauge a little bit of, of, of insight from the business register and what they thought. So as I say, we, we feel that there is opportunities for eBox to be extended and, and to provide um, some of the service both to the business registers and to the, the European Commission very early days, but, but happy to continue that discussion. Thank you for your time and attention.